Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another falconry video. Now the falconry season's finished here for us um, because of course it's well into March and it's spring. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> this video is just, just a little round off really to do with the falconry season. So going forth now we're going to be having lots more how-to and lots more falconry help videos and, and more spotlights on different falconry species. Um, yes at plumados they're in the bag they're coming i'm just waiting on a little bit of input from a couple of other guys i know that also fly at plumado falcons um so that that is coming soon if that's something you're interested in and my goodness me it should be here in the uk the at plumado falcon is massively underflown and has massive potential but that's for another video i just want to round off the falconry season with a short video about the humble Harris's hawk, because it really is, as I've mentioned in other videos, it's it's a bird now that's really, it really is just thought of as a beginner's bird, and and because it is flown by many a novice and and many a dabbler, it really has got the reputation among many falconers as a waste of space, a sort of a useless bird, um, a beginner's bird, an entry level bird, um, a bird that's no good compared to a goshawk, and so on and so forth. And it really isn't that bird. It really isn't that bird. Unfortunately, we see 90 odd percent probably of those Harris Hawks because of the people that are flying them. If you're a novice, you're probably not gonna get the best out of your hawk. If you're a dabbler, you're not getting anything out of your hawk. Um, you shouldn't even be doing this thing. Now, the Harris Hawk itself has so much potential. It is unreal. But to unlock that potential, you need to be working with that bird correctly so you need to understand your falconry um, and you need to get that bird super fit people say all the time i see this a thousand times uh, i'm getting rid of my harris hawk i'm going to get a goshawk soon you know because my mate's goshawk it's much faster it catches more stuff well it will do if you and your mate haven't got your hawks fit and you maybe fly them once or twice a week the goshawk will catch more stuff and it will be faster because at the end of the day an unfit goshawk leaving a fist for 50 yards is going to be faster than an unfit harris hawk without a doubt but neither of those birds are showing their full potential goshawks are goshawks red tails are red tails goodness me the sun's out on his snow glasses on golden eagles are golden eagles and harris's hawks are harris's hawks and so on the harris hawk as an individual bird is obscenely amazing but you've got to put the time in and you've got to have full curry knowledge in fact you know what i've said this before the true harris hawk isn't for the novice and the dabbler it's actually for the expert level falconer that's that's done it all he wants with all these other different birds he wants to fly or she wants to fly it's almost the best bird to return to it has potential to do stuff no other species can but why I'm making this video is because I've been witness to two, actually three, three, one, one Harris is all just over a couple of days, and three Bird of Reasons Hawk, Woody, but Kyle Zara and Tommy Allen, which you've seen mentioned in these videos and vlogs quite a lot, they are the most amazing falconry birds. And I've got to be honest with you, I've been out with all kinds of birds this season. As you know, if you follow the, the channel, my eagle pulled a talon out and lost the talon, and he, he pretty much lost most of his season. Um, he still caught game on the, on the only last day of the season after not flying for weeks, bless him. I've seen some amazing flights. I've seen a golden eagle that's at the top of its game and probably caught as much or more quarry than any other eagle in the UK. But I can honestly say, hand on heart, the best flights I've seen this season are from Zara and from that imprint male, Harris Hawk, Tommy Flies, Alan. It's jaw-dropping stuff. Last season, I got to witness Alan uh, fly woodcock and duck. He didn't catch them. And uh, if you're flying game birds, for sure, a goshawk will be your best bet. It will be your best bet. If you're flying off the fist, tail chasing it in a fair slip, the goshawk will. But if you're flying ga ground game, Harris Hawks take some beating in every possible way. But I'm talking the Harris Hawk that's flown with an almost rounded keel. It's so well conditioned and mentally prepared and in tune with a falconer. I'm talking about a Harris Hawk that's flown pretty much every day under some context, whether that's jump ups to floodlight in the evening, one evening because you just haven't got time. And as the boys do, going out lamping. Those boys go out lamping for two reasons. One, it means they can go hunting almost every day with their birds, even though they work long hours in the winter. Two, 
it means when the weekends do come around and they can go rabbiting, hare hawking, hunting ground game especially, it means their birds are supremely fit like any hawk. If that is bright. If you actually want to get if you actually want to get a proper bird for falconry and a proper falconry bird, you've got to be flying that bird nearly every day. Now with previous goshawks when I was younger, my first goshawk, I flew that bird six days a week, almost religiously, for six months of the year. And I'm not joking, I worked shift work. I took on a shift work job just so I could be a falconer and fly proper falconry birds. And then my last two goshawks, I actually, I was in a position where I knew much more stuff. I had more access to land. I had better field craft. And what I actually did then, I would usually fly them, fly them one day, almost definitely take game i had i had enough time and enough land enough quarry that i could keep going almost definitely take game one kill outings only i'd feed that bird up fully crop it and i'd give it a day off the next day wouldn't feed it and it'd be back on weight big and strong and we'd fly it and i'd almost fly them every other day but they were supremely fit and confident and this is where it's at it's not just about what meat you've got on that bird's chest bone it's about what's going on in here how you've conditioned that bird mentally and really you need to be working with these birds pretty much every day to make that kind of bond and get that kind of fitness. And they need the game and the quarry. Harris Hawks, they probably are the best falconry bird for ground game. But if you want to go out with your mates, half a dozen of you, lobbing your Harris Hawks up trees just a couple of times a week, following you through the woodlands, if you have fun and your birds are healthy, that's fine, isn't it? but they're never going to be top level Harris's hawks. They're never going to, you're going to get one good one in the pack maybe. They're just never going to, they're never going to need to be good quality Harris hawks. They're never going to get fit. The difference between a Harris hawk and a super Harris hawk is masses of fitness and masses of confidence and that bond with a falconer. And they are another level bird. It, unless you've seen a real Harris hawk fly at the top of its game, yeah, you can say Harris Hawks are rubbish and Goshawks are better. I'm not dissing Goshawks. I love Goshawks. I'd have a Goshawk now if I had the game to fly them out regularly. I just don't. Harris Hawks, you can pick them up. You can put them down. They won't get skittish. They'll retain their mental attitude. You can get them fit under torchlight if you have to, whether that's exercises or hunting at night, reliably and well and efficiently. And you can hunt game with those birds that they have no right to chase. Watching that female Harris Hawk Zara, a bird that, that most people would fly at two pound four ounces, I would say, um, two pound five maybe. This bird flying at over two pound 10 ounces, absolute meat on its chest, muscle power galore, and yet in tune with its falconer. That bird, it doesn't really like Kyle. It doesn't really like me. I'm the only person that bird actually likes. She'll stand for me like an imprint. But when those guys are in the hunting season, she works in a team with that boy and they have an amazing bond. But to see that bird fly eight pound or more brown hairs, taking on slips of a distance where the start is already eagle territory, fly them down, miss, fly them down again, get hold of that hair, get a kick in, get the hair will jump and break free, haul that, that bird to haul itself off the deck and now fly another 80 yards, 90 yards in pursuit catch again and so on and take i think 15 hares this season when you think she's probably hunting hares once a week or less they are a supreme bird to work with they are the bird that will fill the freezer in fact i'm not going to put the picture on here because of antis and so on but tommy and kyle were sorting out their chest freezers at home and they would got all the game out the freezer so they could restock it and actually cut up the game and portion it up yeah the garage was full of game i'm not joking a mountain of game that's going to feed those birds all through the year and the boys if they want it seeing alan that male imprint flying at something like one pound 12 or one pound 13 ounces you know some people fly their females at that kind of weight again no keel a completely rounded chest but totally obedient and totally committed the best flight, without a doubt, I've seen this season was from a male Harris hawk flying a fully grown brown hare. It's ludicrous, it shouldn't happen. What kind of mental health have these birds got to take on something that weighs several times their own weight? To see this bird take on a slip hundred, over a hundred yards from where the hare got up, 
flat out fly without missing a wing beat that any goshawk flyer would be proud of. Overhaul the hair and put in, and now we're talking hundreds of yards, the hair was running and it got up over a hundred yards away. To see that bird connect and hang on to that hair, begging and willing Tommy to cover 400 yards himself, which he's never gonna do, bless him, not in time, and eventually get kicked off. Ludicrous that he attempted that, but a testament to the power of a Harris Hawk and the flying style and the jaw-dropping speed and acceleration that Harris Hawks can have. That top few percent. I would say to any falconer that's been flying the same bird and wants to change, he feels he's real top of his game. Train yourself another Harris Hawk. Start where you might have actually, or rather end or, or carry on or, or take up where you might have actually once started your full career and maybe you've turned into a snob and you've dissed the harris hawk since then because you fly other birds if you're hunting ground game and you want to give that game a fair slip and fair crack of the whip and you want to see sporting flights not just about filling a bag put all that knowledge you've got now into a harris's hawk what a machine of a bird i hope you enjoy and have enjoyed some of the clips on here i've asked tommy and carl to send me some i'll see what i get so this video is just a tribute to how special Harris's Hawks can be, flown by those few percent of special falconers that really want to be falconers. Enjoy the video. I'll see you in the next one. Don't worry, hold this space, different species, and lots more help and advice to come. Subscribe, it's a massive help. There's a lot more people watch some of these videos than subscribe. So if you don't mind, hit subscribe. You're gonna help us out. See you in the next one. Of course, you know as well as I do that the best, most exceptional flights, yeah, I've got no footage of those. <laughs> They're only in here, um, but I've got witnesses, that's for sure.